the best news of the day and something I can finally confirm and my guess and my inside knowledge was definitely right. So big up to the plug, big up for the insight and letting me know and creeping to my DMs and letting me know this little bit of a nugget. But I was told pretty categorically maybe a month ago maybe more than a month ago that the Bergheim was looking to open around October I couldn't say on the podcast again because I didn't want to leak the information and get ahead of what my plug said because he said you know keep that information to yourself he or she I don't know if it is he or she because it's an anonymous account but regardless said to keep it to myself which I did keep it to myself but I was told more likely they going to be October now I was thinking myself to go around the end of the month. As I mentioned prior on this podcast, I was thinking of going for the um, Sylvester sort of New Year's Eve um, gatherings, which usually starts from the 31st to the 3rd to the 2nd to the 3rd, right? I think it's three days, yeah? I think it's 31st. Or is it maybe 30, 31st, 30, 31st, 2nd, 1st, 2nd. I don't know, whatever. It's three days. Anyway, it's three days, right? Um, or it's across three days. But it starts like, you know... At, 11.59 on the 31st you get to celebrate your flipping New Year's Eve and then it kind of rolls over to the 1st of January 2nd and 3rd I want to go there at least for two of those days three of those maybe fingers crossed I can do it I hope so I'm kind of touching wood and all that malarkey please 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 so that was the plan right that didn't happen cool no problem so I was thinking to myself you know what that's why I want to go anyway so we don't have any idea when it's going to open then I get this nugget of it's going to open in October I'm like yes finally I can start planning but still you're not too sure because the program and the times are at. I didn't want to book anything in case it got delayed or something happened you just know you never know with this pandemic things could always change you know at a moment's notice and again you know the most annoying thing about the early days of the pandemic was people who were booking holidays during the times when the traffic light system was a bit crazy and then they'll get annoyed when it changed last minute and people like oh I booked this ticket I was gonna go here now I can't go it's like yeah duh we're living in a global pandemic things will change uh you know at the drop of a hat you need to be accepting these risks and at the moment Sorry, I just thought it was an un- uh, it wasn't a risk risk worth taking, especially when I was going to get confirmation maybe fairly soon. And now we finally got confirmation from Bergheim himself because they've obviously released um the program. And this is courtesy of Resident Advisor says Bergheim to reopen doors on October the second. It'll be the club's first club night na- club night basically club match um since march 2020 absolutely insane right uh berlin club bergheim reopened its doors in october imagine kind of walking back again on this flipping sandy cobbled road standing there queuing with people acting all quiet and shy not wanting to sing being in case somebody says that you're too fucked up or you're too drunk and you have to leave um get into the door uttering you or me or or whatever you want to say in English or German, right? You then get there, then you get search and stuff, and you finally get that's where you're, yeah, no, it's gonna be so exciting. I can't wait, man. The first two um club nights are scheduled for Saturday, October the tw- second. Uh, with back to backs, uh, the, the, the rest of October includes the, 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 during the pandemic. Berghain hosted a weekend garden parties and midweek events since July, um, as well as a studio Berlin exhibition. Now, I would have liked to have gone to the Berghain during these whole garden parties that they're having. Of course, you know, it didn't really make it that it didn't really make much sense to go to like a day party in a Bergheim without the ability to go to the actual Bergheim itself. It kind of takes away the, if you, yeah, if, especially if you're not from there, it doesn't make sense to travel all the way there just to just essentially go to an outdoor party. You could go to yourself here in England. It doesn't make much sense. Much rather invest money in supporting the guys here who are still kind of getting back on their feet and um, then going over ab- abroad and going there and doing that and obviously now with the club reopen you can go obviously do and do that. So we've got here a full listing of the programs for the opening night and it's looking banging the lineup is looking absolutely insane for the opening night um at the Bergheim in october so second of october they have ben clock in again i was right in terms of the date i said the third it says the second but essentially is the third because you know it's 11 59 p.m um main room or main area in Bergheim. they've got ben clock back to back with myself deepman two residents in uh, you know Bergheim playing back to back it's gonna be absolutely filthy um dj stingray electro indigo hector oaks oh wow he's doing opening night he must be super happy about that face fatal um roxy moore big up her steffi of course og um Bergheim head you got of course um steffi sometimes plays Berger and Empire Rumba. again it's a good illustration of her ability to DJ at that level that she's able to kind of bounce between a very dark techno room and obviously a more flowery disco-y housey stuff but again we move um Paramba, you got Chris Cruz, Chromac Local, Gabrielle Quartang, I'm not really sure who she is, Gabrielle Quartang or Wartang. Um, you got um M Backer back to back with Massimilio Pilagri, who's playing, I think, at Crossbreed at Fold soon in October, which I want to go to, hopefully, so that 
that should be good to see him play. You got Tamasoma playing back to back with Lakuti. Relationship goes there. You got Val Bordino and you got Virginia as well playing upstairs at Panama Bar. If you don't know Virginia, you don't know Steph. You don't know Steph. You don't know Virginia. So pretty powerful opening night at the Bergheim going through. And then you look at the other nights, they're just as good um, going through them. D Dan. Um, yeah, then D D Dan the following weekend. Uh, DJ Tour at the Cap hyperactivist so again loads of local people playing um or people you know that, that live in berlin or live in the proximity so that's nice to see that they kind of given a priority to those guys to get back on their feet and play i think that might be purposefully done i'd assume so um arm is playing again on the uh, on the following one uh there you see freddie k um of course he's obviously always a good um fix to see there some of the, i've actually i haven't actually seen freddie k play at Berger, and i've always heard the sets are incredible i think sometimes during the new year's eve sets i think he plays sometimes the is it one of the longer sets at the end well i'm not too sure but anyway he's he's a fairly um well regarded um in terms of playing in the Berger, and people always have really good things to say about him um Bobby Diba, nini h Cynthi, fka ma4 oh wow the that's the guy that played in um, Hua Berlin. He's playing at Panorama Bar. That's flipping sick booking. He's been able to get some... If you haven't seen this guy play before, um, he's got a couple of sets on... Yeah, on that Hua Berlin site, or uh, online radio show. He's really, really good. So it's great to see him be able to play at place at Panorama Bar. I'd like to think it's because they saw his sets online. So maybe it gives me hope if I'm able to stream on a consistent basis on my platform, they'll be able to see that I play really good. and be like, hey, you want to wanna, wanna play at Panorama Bar too? I'll be like... Oh i'll legitimately cry um god jansen is there um palms tracks moment wing who else i like here rod had of course uh fatty moham luke slater og madman matrix man mad yeah honestly sick sick opening i can't complain i don't think anyone can i'm pretty sure all these nights are going to be back to back to back chocker block um it, you're probably ill-advised to go the opening night especially considering how stellar that lineup is but it might be worth a try because everyone likes to go to the first thing i remember i went to the first ever fold and it first opened the first party and it was legendary and it made me kind of fall in love with the club ever since but you know sometimes going to first is a good thing so if you want to go maybe advice is as per usual to go what is it usually early sunday right is usually a good no sorry sunday yes sunday daytime usually is a good time to go that i've kind of got in really easily um i've usually struggled to get in panorama sometimes already panorama but opens up on a friday and then you've got the burger open up from the saturday onwards i usually find it a little bit more easier to go to panorama because it seems that like less people go there because most people want to go for the dark dark techno shit i feel like i don't know if that's a good um you know estimation i guess it depends who plays up a panorama bar but usually i always find burger usually more full so i usually find fridays a good time to go regardless because you know you can get in but obviously you have to compete with the tourists of course with the pandemic that might have slowed the tourism down somewhat so i'm interested to see what the kind of intake is going to be in the in burger and Paramba. because if i remember correctly the last time i went was was it 2020 was it february 2020 or was it february 2019 regardless it was the last time it was open right um i went was it 2020 2019 let me just double check i went da, 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 da. it's like the year here i went let's see if it was 2020 it might have been 2020 february because when i went there it was pretty empty right oh yeah it was 2020 february i remember i remember the flyer design so when i went in there it was quite empty more so than it's ever been i've ever been there before because i guess people were aware of the pandemic and things were maybe changing and you couldn't move around as easy as you wanted to um so if i can scroll down here of course you can see panel bars open on a friday i saw yeah this is the one i went i went last of the month so this is the one i went to i went to the one on the 29th of the second 2020 that was one of the you know last ones i think of the bird kind they did there right events when did it when did when was the last party they actually did uh, it looks like they ended them around April, right? That was their last, last event that they were doing. So last few months. And it was pretty empty, man. More so than it's ever been. That's so empty that I was able to go right to the front of the booth. And usually if you've ever gone been to Bergheim main floor, um, you'd know that it's quite difficult to get past the first row of dancers dancing on the plinths on the little boxes and getting past there because everyone's just like raging, get, you know, going absolutely nuts. So you have to kind of sometimes have to go through the kind of sidebar and then pop over to the front where the DJ is. And I'd never actually seen it the dj booth right so far in front that and usually sometimes you know again because people 
because when you go into those kind of places, you're less thinking about standing next to the booth or doing that sort of corny stuff. You're in there specifically to see someone play or to just hear good music or to just fucking dance your face off. You're not really thinking about it. But this time I obviously could because I could actually see the booth and I was surprised. I was like, Jesus, this is really empty compared to how it usually is. And um, maybe that was an indication of, you know, the slowingness of the kind of, you know, techno tourism hadn't really kind of popped up as it was before. So I'm interested to see how it's going to be when it reopens. Is it going to be the same sort of um, um, people going there? Is it going to be a different crowd? Has the crowd much? Because again, I've seen it in England. I'm not sure I was in Berlin. I'd love for people in Berlin to let me know. But here in London, for the most part, I've definitely seen a change in the people that go out. Again, I've been out to a few places already. I've not been out to all the dirty places just yet, all the grimy places, but all the normal clubs I've been to and kind of day festivals. I have seen a kind of change in the clientele. It's a lot more older. Uh, people, are, are, people are obviously going for it or not going for it. There's no middle ground. It's just like people caning it and not and just going for the vibes. But there's less, definitely less people going out in general. I think we've probably lost about, I think, forget the tourism part but i think in terms of domestic people going i think we've lost about 20 to 30 percent i think someone mentioned it before at the um you know labyrinth open air but i think domestic um ravers we've lost about 20 to 30 who have maybe just moved on to other things and occupied their time with other hobbies and things they want to do but that definitely has affected the kind of overall intensity of the nights out you can still go out and have an absolute rager because we've still got the best some of the best club nights in the world some of the best djs playing here but in terms of the absolute ambience and the necessity to go out it's definitely kind of waned a little bit but i'm interested to see or interested to hear if it's been the same in berlin if you've noticed a change if like you know the 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 places around cop bus or tour or the kind of you know the bars and all that and all that stuff like even bars at like eight millimeter bar right um in prince lauerberg i think is that somewhere around there right that kind of um indie rock kind of bar is that still for are people still going to those kind of places um i'd love to know um because that's definitely an indication of if things are back to normal even you know um stuff like Cater Blue, stuff like About Blank, um, stuff like Same Heads, all these places that were generally just always popping off in the weekends, regardless of who was playing, regardless of all the big techno places that exist, those, those are still kind of, you know, um, great places to go and kind of whittle, you know, whittle down the evening. I wonder if they're still around. I really do wonder if the vibe is still there the same. If you know, let me know in the comments. But yeah, Bergheim is back October 2nd, October 3rd. So get back on there if you want to. It's going to be an absolute monumental occasion. Everyone's going to be going crazy. I think when I eventually go, like I said, it's either going to be the end of November. Yeah, it's definitely going to be end of November or it's going to be the beginning of January for the New Year's Eve thing, right? And the plan is to go and take a bit of money and maybe get some merch as well because I just want to take advantage of it because getting stuff shipped over here, especially now since we're, you know, out of the EU and we're in Brexit, I'd love to pick up some merch and get some, you know, get some flipping soft goods from the site. A lot of it's definitely sold out, the orange, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, what else? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, all the stuff is sort of sold out, but I'm really looking forward to getting it. I really, really can't wait. So yeah, um, keep an eye out for me confirming the dates and stuff. And if you happen to be better in the same time as I, or if you live there or whatever, definitely hit me up. But I'm definitely looking to go end of November, even the beginning of January. But yeah, Berghain is back open. Paranormal Bar is back open too can't wait it's definitely a mark that the world is reopening up and get to some level of normality and hopefully now all the division and the fighting on techno twitter and stuff can kind of simmer down people are getting back to doing what they need to do in terms of jobs i've noticed it too i don't know if you have but the discourse has slowed down it's not as vile as it was before because people generally didn't have an ability to make money pay rent you know be able to eat and whatever it may be and now you're able to do so festivals are popping up little by little whatever they may be shitty or not shitty it's still good to see people out doing what they know how to do best, which is sit down behind the flipping booth and play flipping records other people make. That's what they're good at. Given hot takes on Twitter and social media, I don't want to hear it. So great to see everyone back out doing what they know best. Boom.